medical innovation comes from the pulse of science. And so with, with each kind of new invigoration or new discoveries, you know, we take that kind of unwind it and then put it in a language that most people can understand, adapt, and then employ into their daily lives. Because innovation means nothing if we can't include it in our daily lives. So Very I think that's a, it's a really poignant um, tagline. So I like it. Should we cheers again to that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> Well, here we are. Uh, here we are. So where were we at last week? Palm Beach? Palm Beach, yeah. Florida at the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. Yeah, where you got to speak. Uh, what was it, on Sunday? Where Sunday you... afternoon, yeah. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good uh, talk you had. Look, it's a good event. The, um, you know, the A4M is probably one of the preeminent anti-aging longevity conferences mm-hmm. out there. They've been around for 25, 30 years probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's where you go and really see the latest, greatest kind of new innovations, product technology, up and coming disciplines in medicine. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's always good to go and again, keep our finger on the, the pulse of science and new anti-aging medicine yeah. and longevity techniques. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what I saw out there as far as anything really kind of new. I did see a couple different like needling type of products there. Um, some supplements, um, a lot of gene therapy type yeah. of stuff, which... <clears throat> yeah, there were no epiphanies for me. I mean, honestly, my opinion is probably 80, 85% of the things that are there are kind of what I call Me Too technologies. Yeah. Nothing really differentiating. It's, 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 it's companies, I think, for the most part, good companies with good products, mm-hmm. but really no great kind of life-changing products. And I think that really, it's good news for us, because, you know, we've been doing this for, for a number of years, and we have actually product technology that actually works. Yeah. And in fact, we've been criticized by some of the other vendors there and from the, yeah. the organizers of the company, because we actually take an analyzer, mm-hmm. an objective measure of nitric oxide, and then test our products, test other exhibitors' products, Mm-hmm. And to show the attendees there, they're spending their time, their resources, their money on these products. And we can demonstrate, objectively, yeah. unequivocally show that our products produce nitric oxide where no other product, no other nitric oxide product from these, all these other exhibitors there mm-hmm. uh, deliver on the nitric oxide promise. So, you know, and <coughs> in fact, one of the uh, original founders of the A4M said, look, he goes, if if all our exhibitors put their products to the test like you guys do, mm-hmm. you would be the only exhibitor in the room. And I go, well, that would be fine with me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's Obviously, kind of, that's their financial model is to get... It's like, how do you kind of take that too? Because, you know, at the same time, you would want representation of actual efficacious products that, that work. And I know some people get upset that we test products and so forth. But at the end of the day, um, they know what they're launching. Right? Yeah, that's right. And if their product works or not, if they're just trying to ride the wave of the science that's out there. And that's one thing that bothers me because <clears throat> you have people who buy these products that don't work and now they don't believe in nitric oxide in the science, yeah. because the marketing of some other product they just got into, they purchased it, doesn't work. And, you know, that person now still has issues, but is not willing yeah. to look at nitric oxide as uh, a beneficial product yeah so. and that's the problem with with big companies is they follow fads mm-hmm. and they follow trends what differentiates us is we create fads mm-hmm. we create the trends but are, that are based on science so the the latest fad really over the past five or six years has been gummies yeah and chews yeah. you know putting ingredients or nutrients and vitamins in gummies or chews which is like the absolute worst thing you can do because mm-hmm. you basically poison that ingredient. And the last thing Americans need is more sugars or gummies or chews that cause cavities, disrupt the oral microbiome, and completely shut down nitric oxide production. So, you know, with any fad, it's just that. It's a fad. Uh, these companies will, will introduce products, ride the wave. Mm-hmm. Um, but once consumers figure out and they survive the life cycle of that fad, they'll realize, oh, well, that was a really bad idea. Yeah. And so... I tell people all the time, you have to get rid of gummies and chews. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. You don't need vitamins in gummies or chews. Take vitamins straight from the source, yeah. clean powders, products. Uh, you certainly can't get nitric oxide from a gummy or a chew mm-hmm. um, because, number one, it's a, it's a hydrated matrix. And again, nitric oxide's a gas. The other thing is, too, is just the numbers don't work. You've got a one to two gram gummy and you've got to deliver, if you're delivering beets in that gummy, you got to deliver six, eight, ten grams mm-hmm. of that to see any efficacy on that. So, I mean, it's obviously it's the source of our daily frustrations and differentiating our products and from all the other so-called nitric oxide products out there. But, you know, that's why we educate and inform. That's why it's mm-hmm. important that we lecture and have a presence out there. And, you know, when I look back 10 years when we started at the, at the A4M and lecturing, you know, I was the only player in town who talked about nitric oxide. Yeah. Really the only lecture for many, many years. And now, just this past week, there were at least half a dozen lectures that were either nitric oxide centric or mentioned nitric oxide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the interesting thing is I look at the speakers who spoke on nitric oxide. And then what I do is I just go to the literature and see, are these people experts? Have they published anything on, on nitric oxide? Are they scientists? Are they a talking head? Mm-hmm. And so what we're finding is that these companies go out and pay these clinicians a speaker's fee or sponsor them in some capacity to give lip service to nitric oxide. But these people have never published a single paper on nitric oxide. So. Yeah.